input output addressing. Hello students, as we have studied the introduction to input output devices, every input output device is controlled by writing some command code to the control line. The status of the various input output devices like busy or ready can be obtained by checking a status register. So, operating an input output device is essentially very similar to reading and writing memory, except that write operations to the command register will make the input output device do a certain operation. Just like memory, input output devices need to be assigned a unique ID or address. But we need some mechanism that can differentiate between an input output address and memory address. So, for addressing, a various input output devices, two addressing schemes are needed and they are as follows. 1. Standard input output, which uses specific input output instructions. 2. Memory mapped input output, which uses general purpose operand manipulation instructions. Currently, only the Intel Pentium CPU processor uses standard input output. All other CPUs, SPARC, PowerPC, Alpha, and many more use memory mapped input output. Let us discuss these addressing schemes in detail. Let us start with standard input output. In the standard input output technique, input output devices and memory location have separate address spaces. Two spaces are separate if there is an external or explicit signal that identifies the space. Let's take an example to understand this concept. There are many Lotto games in the US. If we have a big game ticket with the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the Lotto South draws the six winning numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then although your big game ticket has the winning numbers, you are not a winner. Similarly, whenever the CPU sends an address 1, 2, 3, 4 on the address bus, that address can be used to address a memory location or an input output device. The CPU has an extra explicit signal that indicates whether the address is a memory location or an input output device. The MREQ signal is used to signal memory requests. The IORQ signal is used to signal input output requests. When the CPU wants to access or read or write a memory location, it sends the MREQ signal. Similarly, when the CPU wants to access or read or write an input output device, it sends the IORQ signal. The assembler programmer who programs the CPU must therefore have two different types of assembler instructions to users disposer that allow them to send the MREQ or IORQ signals. In the Intel Pentium, which is the only processor that uses standard input output, the programmer uses 1. Load or ID and store ST instruction to access memory. Hence, when the CPU executes a load or store instruction, it will send the MREQ signal. 2. Input or IN and output or UT instruction is used to access input output devices. Hence, when the CPU is accused and input or output instruction, it will send the IORQ signal. Now, moving to memory mapped input output. In the memory mapped IO technique, input output devices address and memory addresses share the same address spaces. In other words, there is no extra explicit signal to indicate whether the requested address is for a memory location or an input output device. Therefore, when the CPU sends out an address, there is no way to tell by only looking at all the signals from the CPU if the address was for a memory location or for an input output device. But of course, there must be a way to tell the difference, just not by looking at the signal from the CPU. In general, memory mapped I.O. is constructed using one signal that is the MREQ signal, which is used to signal both memory and input output device requests. When the CPU wants to access or read or write a memory location or an input output device, it always assets the MREQ signal. For example, 
the M68000 uses memory mapped I.O. and it can use the move instruction to access the memory and I.O. device. In memory mapped I.O., the address space of the system is partitioned by the manufacturer, that is, the range of address values, into a set of addresses for the memory and another set for input output devices. After determining the two, that is, the joint sets, the manufacturer will construct selection circuitries that implement the partition. For example, using a 32-bit addressing scheme, a simple partition scheme is described which have addresses that start with 1 referring to a memory location and address that start with 0 to refer an input-output device. Then, we can use the remaining 31 bits of the address as the actual address portion for selecting a memory location or input output device. That brings us to the end of the section. Thank you and see you in our next section.